Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today I'm gonna to go over sort of five tools. There's actually more than five here, but I've got like hammer. This would be one, two, three, four, and then I'm just gonna lump all that together as five. Um, so you get more than you paid for, but let's start out. These are five tools that I got immediately after I watched somebody else use them. Um, and that was because they were so efficient or good for what they were doing, talented, the, the application was, uh, was so incredibly functional or useful that I just had to have the tool. Um, and they aren't that unusual and you probably have lots of them. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. On this end, um, I've got a couple of S-Wing hammers. Now, the, the ones that I originally saw were wooden handled. I went, I was kind of in on, went through an S-Wing phase where I got a lot of S-Wing and I, was, I appreciated the rock solidness of it. But, you know, I think that's, there's some drawbacks to having a steel handle, even with this shock proof um, or shock absorbing handle. But anyway, it's the brick layer hand hammer. This is a 22 ounce hammer, kind of a unique shape, doesn't pull nails, doesn't even pound nails all that well, but um, USA. But what it does well is if I'm laying patio brick or doing uh, cobblestones, walkways, things like that, which I do seem to end up doing a lot, especially in the summer, um, I used to do it more with a pry bar and a bigger rubber, big rubber mallet. Still use the rubber mallet and the pry bar for other things, but just this becomes an extension of my hand as I'm manipulating, lifting, um, adjusting the sand un underneath it, aligning, spacing uh, the bricks. You can put it in and twist. You know, you can tap to uh, vibrate it to let it settle. Um, it it's just becomes a total extension of your arm as you're manipulating uh, paver stones. Um, creating uh, patios or walkways. Um, and once I started using it, it's just a whole new dimension in your in, in my ability to manipulate uh, the bricks. You can also trim them if you need to a little bit. I usually use a tile saw with a special blade, but um, you can chip them if you need, say, to round a corner. Um, you can easily move them around with some leverage. Um, and then, of course, you can lift them underneath, which is a lot of it, you know, trying to balance them out, keep them flat. Uh, anyway, the moment um, a friend of mine was helping, he brought over his bricklayer hammer and he started using it. It was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get one of those, which I did, and I've used it a ton. Um, along that same line, I was watching a mechanic and he was using a tiny little ball peen. This is uh, the S-Wing. It's an eight ounce ball peen hammer, little tiny head. Um, but just the manipulation of it, it I used to think, you know, the bigger the ball peen, the better, you know, that was the point of the ball peen. But in fact, you can get a lot of the same performance just at a much smaller scale. And that was pretty cool. So I ended up picking up one of these pretty quick um, just because the small ball peen stuff. And I've also gone down, you know, I've got a PB Swiss similar to this, small snap on, and then I even have the little two ounce blue point that I don't think is made anymore um, because uh, not everything is hard, not everything is big. Um, instead, what you've got are, uh, you know, the same needs as a ball peen, just on a smaller scale. And then just working with this, it's so much handier, you know, and especially in confined spaces, you need a little bit of uh, tapping enthusiasm on whatever it is you're doing. That was one I definitely got quick. Um, this will be a quick one. Um, you know, in my when I first started doing experimenting, doing some of my own electrical stuff, I picked up one of these. It wasn't actually a Klein; I think it was a Greenlee at the time. But uh, basically, this is a GFCI circuit or a grounded outlet circuit tester. You can use them in GFCIs, um, but if you want to trip the GFCI to test it, you need the one that has the button that allows you to short it out and do the do the um, assessment of the GFCI function. Now. I didn't get one um, because it was like five bucks more at the time. So I just got the regular one. Um, and then um, I was having some electrical work done and the electrician pulled out something very similar to this and started testing it and tripping all of them because we were rewiring some stuff in the, around um, bathroom and kitchen. So we put in GFCIs and he was just testing those. And I thought, why didn't I just get, spend the extra five bucks? So went and got another one um, right away. So spend the extra five if you don't have one. The next is uh, I was having some um, somebody uh, work on our, I had an old 1930s bungalow um, that I was doing some restoration on and I had somebody come in to uh, uh, kind of teach me a little bit about the windows and what I was in for as far as you know the window weight 
Um, cords had all snapped. The window weights had dropped to the bottom. Some of them were painted shut. Some of them, they're, you know, they were all single pane. We were wondering if we should try to restore it vintage with some doubles, manufactured double panes, or just take them out and put in new vinyl windows. Anyway, he had one of these. It's kind of like the painter's helper or something. But you can use it as a pry bar. You can cut things with it. You can slice. Um, but anyway, he had, this was his, pretty much his whole tool bag right here. So he'd use this to cut out the edges uh, where it had, it had been painted shut, you know, probably over many decades. Um, he would try to pry them loose or he would wedge it in and bend to see if the window frame was distorting or if the sill was distorting. Um, anyway, I just watched a lot of the different ways he applied this and thought, you know, it's like a $10 tool. And it was so handy and I got one and it honestly, it goes with me everywhere if I've got a project because it just comes in so handy as a cutter, as a pry bar, as a small teeny prying cutting tool here, larger here. It's a full on scraper. This is designed, you know, to squeeze the paint off of your roller when you're cleaning up, but occasionally it has some other uses. Um, you can pound on it with a hammer. Um, pretty solid and inexpensive. So this was one, the moment I saw it, I had to have one. Um, a couple of saws. Start with this guy. Uh, this is a um, JSC. It's a Japanese bladed um, plumb best. Uh, they call these flush cutting pipe cutter saws or flush cut saws. This is a fine tooth. I recommend that for the kind of stuff I do, um, you know, which is going to be finish work. Um, and I do a lot uh, um, kind of restoring some wood floors. I love wood floors. I hate carpet. And I um, was working with a uh, um, a wood floor guy um, going over some um, some replacement of boards and then also some modifications on a maple wood floor, which is kind of like a bowling alley. Anyway, and as we were working with some trim, he just whips this thing out, slides it under, you know, and just saws right through flush, no problem. I'm thinking I was going to have to get my saws all and a big flexible blade and something. And then he's also working around and he's trimming things. You can cut plastic uh, pipe with this as well. That's kind of, I guess that's where the plum and probably in plumber for plumb best. Um, and it's known as a pipe saw. I can pop the blade out of it and replace the blade if I wear it out. You literally just kind of, you bang it like this until you knock it free out of its holder and then you can put another one in. They come in different blade uh, tooth designs and shapes and stuff. But anyway, this flush cutting um, kind of pipe saw just comes in really handy because I mean, look how flexible this blade is. So you can just press it up against something, get a nice flat flat cutting surface and uh, trim things uh, flush. So it's great for wood floors. It's great for dowels or if you're connecting boards. It's great if you've got, um, you know, some, some uh, warpage in a board. You can actually do a little bit of planing with this. Duct work. I mean, it's a nice thin blade. The moment I saw him use it, I thought, I gotta have one of these. And... Um, they're quite affordable. Um, along that same line, only in an outdoor space, I saw somebody um, who had a silky saw. Now I've got a lot of folding saws of various flavors. I even did a video on it a while ago, but this particular one, the silky brand, uh, is just uh, way above the others um, in terms of blade quality, tooth design, the way the, the teeth clean. Um, you know, even if you're cutting wet wood, they come in different, um, um, number of teeth per inch and that's often dictated by the handle color you know they the orange is is a coarse blade they have yellow they have black um for different shapes or, or different blade configurations they come in a bunch of different lengths there's one sh i've got one shorter than this and i've got a couple longer than this um nice solid locking mechanism so i can do a flat cut like this as you can see or the standard rounded cut which is more an arborist style um, they go with me overlanding and camping all the time. I use them around the house. Um, this is a rubbery coated material, steel. Um, this is the Silky Pocket Boy. Um, they all have kind of interesting names. Clever Japanese, but it's Japanese steel. Um, you can see that. Um, and then you can buy replacement blades. Um, you know, this says, this, it, it's, this is the Pocket Boy 170, so it's 170 or 17 centimeters, 170 millimeters, 17 centimeters is how they're measuring that. But anyway, that was one. The moment I saw it, I thought that is the best folding saw, period. Um, last thing I'll lump together, they're all by Klein. And 
Um, I had a, uh, a house inspector going through one of my properties, or a property I was thinking about getting, um, and he actually had these tools um, and along with his, you know, usual complement of, you know, a thermometer for the duct work, an infrared thermometer, you know, he had um, a wind speed meter for furnace stuff. I mean, it was, it was kind of neat to see the way that a lot of the stuff was applied, but he was pulling outlet covers and, and he needed my permission. So of course I gave it to him, you know, before he could be kind of invasive with the house, but he would just grab these things and just start pulling apart screws and popping things off and then screwing them back in, no drill needed. Um, and I, I had seen these, I hadn't really thought about it, but I just watched him over the time he was there, just constantly pulling screws out, putting them back in, nothing's high torque. Um, and I thought those are super handy, I've got to get a set. Um, especially for electrical outlet work if you're doing a bunch of exchanges. Um, it's so much easier and if you're using the cheap plastic covers, um, they usually snap them with a drill because you go a little bit beyond the plastic bends and these you can kind of cinch down, um, but you can't generate too much force. And along the same lines, um, you can see I've got some dated Klein here, old ones. This is a uh, um, 5 16 nut driver. They both are. It's real common in appliance and electrical sized uh, machine screws. Um, so if you're working on a um, on large appliances, you know, I guess the durable goods and economic speak, um, I find having these really handy. I was using socket wrenches and um, kind of small um, nut drivers. I have a set of cra old Craftsman ones. Uh, but anyway, I had a um, uh, a technician come in who started working on, I think it was an old washing machine, and immediately started taking it apart, but he pulled out tools just like this, designed, dedicated for those size machine screws, and went to town on it. And these are not very expensive, super handy. I've got both regular length and the extra long, and I've got both the kind of the pass-through, if you've got a long bolt, um, and the magnetic. Um, you can see that one's kind of rusty because it ends up getting worked you know, laundry stuff always gets wet. Um, but anyway, these were, the moment I saw them, these were the things I had to have, um, and I use them all the time. Um, not expensive, super handy, and definitely, um, once you see them in action, um, compared to regular uh, nut drivers, or worse, you know, a socket and extension, um, they're just totally superior. But anyway, those are just a few of the tools that I've gotten when I've seen people use them and thought, that was like a, a black hole in my tool use. I need to get the tool, and I know that I'm going to be doing that exact job again, so um, I'm going to enjoy having the, the, the right tool for the job, or a tool that will let me do what I was not capable of doing before. Um, I want to know what your uh, have-to-get tools are, the ones you saw somebody use and thought, that's on my list, or I need that immediately. Um, you know, or what changed your, your tool life within that job space? Let me know in the comments because uh, I'm sure you've probably got some tool suggestions that um, I would probably want to, uh, want to act on and I assume others would. So anyway, with that, Doc out.